Hey there. Welcome to the AVT Simulation Training Center. In the previous video, we discussed the differences of extended reality. These differences have come from years of research and efforts made in the development of technology. Extended reality didn't just appear overnight. So in this video, we'll take a look at the history of XR and how it all began. Beginning with the word virtual, the term has changed over the centuries. Stemming from the Latin word virtus, then virtualis, virtual in the 15th century meant being something in essence or effect, though not actually or in fact. Then in 1959, the meaning changed in common use to not physically existing, but made to appear by software. Two meanings with the same basic principle. Now, it all began in 1838 when Sir Charles Wheatstone described stereopsis and binocular vision. This is now our understanding of perception of depth and 3D through two eyes, and it's the basis of all XR. Then, in 1840, Wheatstone invented the very first stereoscope. This device allowed the user to separate their vision into two images, seemingly forming one 3D image. The study of vision died down in the coming years, until Stanley Weinbaum, a filmmaker, made Pygmalion's Spectacles in 1935. This film was about a pair of glasses that lets you experience a whole other world. This was the first time that someone even thought of the possibilities of extended reality, and it sparked a virtual revolution. After years of speculation and sci-fi intrigue, in 1957, the first virtual world was invented. Named by its creator, Morton Helig, filmmaker, inventor, and father of VR, the Sensorama was a booth with an HMD. It displayed a 3D film with audio, wind, and different smells to trick your senses into believing you were somewhere else entirely. This was astoundingly advanced for the time. Once the Sensorama was complete, Helig upgraded his HMD. In 1960, he invented the Telesphere Mask, the world's first perfected HMD with 3D vision, peripheral, and binaural audio. Unfortunately, Helig was never recognized for his achievements. Despite it being a valuable part of history, his Telesphere Mask was refused to be displayed by museums for no cost at all. However, his accomplishments live on in our ever-advancing XR technologies. Around the same time, Thomas Furness began his work on the instrumentation and visual displays for cockpits. We'll get back to that in a minute. In 1961, two engineers from Philco Corp invented HeadSight, the first HMD used for military applications to safely see hazards from a remote location. Then, in 1968, Ivan Sutherland created the Sword of Democles, a cutting-edge VR HMD. It had a stereoscopic display with overlaid wireframe 3D shapes that changed perspective to the user's movement. In 69, Myron Kruger collaborated with other early researchers of XR to create Glowflow. Glowflow was an interactive darkened room that tracked movements with phosphorescent tubing. This was a big step for AR, and it led Myron Kruger to invent VideoPlace in 1975. This was the first interactive VR platform with no HMD or gloves. Later, in 1983, he released a book called Artificial Reality, officially coining the phrase. Shortly after Video Place was released, the Aspen Movie Map was created by MIT and DARPA. Built in 1978, it was a VR street view slideshow of someone driving through Aspen. The program let the user choose simple commands like left, right, stop, and go. It simply required a few laser discs, a computer, and a touchscreen display. It's seen as the predecessor to software like Google Maps Street View, which wasn't even invented until 2010. A year later, McDonnell Douglas Corp. integrated VR into an HMD called the Vital Helmet for military use. It allowed the system to track the pilot's eyes using computer-generated images. Stereographics continued Wheatstone's work on stereoscopy when they invented the Stereovision glasses in 1980. These glasses allow the wearer to see enhanced illusions of depth using stereopsis and binocular vision, much like its predecessor did. Another major milestone for AR was Sandin and Defani's Sayer gloves in 1982. These gloves gave us the ability of gesture recognition, which we use in today's technology to track hand movements. In 86, Thomas Furness, the guy we talked about back in the 60s, finally developed his super cockpit, the very first full flight simulator with computer generated 3D maps. It included infrared, radar, and plenty of avionics data. This piece was way ahead of its time and was the precursor to all full flight sims. Throughout the 80s, computer programmer and artist John Lanier heavily researched AR. Lanier left Atari to co-found VPL Research. 
This was the first company to sell VR goggles and gloves. Then in 89, he coined the phrase virtual reality. Lanier coining VR wasn't the only exciting thing to happen in 89, however. Scott Foster and Crystal River Engineering also developed real-time binaural 3D audio. This allows us to hear the virtual world with depth and directionality without any latency or lag. Turning to the entertainment side of XR, in 1990, Jonathan Waldern presented Virtuality. This was the first VR arcade game and it was presented at the Computer Graphics 90 exhibition in London, England. Then, in 91, Sega attempted the infamous release of the first public consumer VR headset. Unfortunately for the lack of realism and overpromising, the Sega VR was DOA. The next big leap in extended reality happened a year later when Louis Rosenberg from Armstrong Laboratories invented virtual fixture for the first immersive MR system. This was the first system to allow the user to interact with the virtual world by using an overlay of virtual sensory information. This new technology led Paul Milgram and Fumio Kishino to define the spectrum of MR as anywhere between the extrema of the virtual continuum, or VC. Now that XR has gotten its feet under it, even more practical uses began to appear. For instance, in 1997, Georgia Tech and Emory U created VR war zones for PTSD therapy. This goes to show the potential and many possibilities of XR. Our founder saw this potential in XR, leading him to open AVT Simulation in 1998. Since then, AVT has been striving for technological excellence in applying XR to our simulators. Thanks for training with us, and stay tuned for our next video. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment with any questions or ideas for future videos.